This is one of those mischievous little problems that look initially rather cumbersome and algebra intensive, but it actually has a gorgeous, a charming solution waiting to be discovered. And it is my pleasure to be able to present to you this lovely solution throughout this video. But before we partake in such a journey, I'd like to recognize Prakar Agarwal, who was the very first person to provide a correct solution to this problem last week. A huge shout out to Prakar. Now let us begin. Given that x and y are real numbers between 0 and 1 exclusive, solve the following system of equations. And we have these two reasonably complicated looking equations given to us. To begin with, the presence of square root of 1 minus x squared, square root of 1 minus y squared, and even 1 minus y squared by itself is suggesting to us that maybe we should try out a trig substitution such as x equals to sine of alpha and y equals to sine of beta. Why? Well, realize that if x is sine of alpha, square root of 1 minus x squared is going to simplify nicely as square root of 1 minus sine square root of alpha or cosine square root of alpha. And in the case that cosine of alpha is positive, we can simplify this even more as just cosine of alpha. And the simplifications like this in the first equation is going to allow us to employ our knowledge of trigonometric identities to even more simplify the first equation. Before we proceed, I should make explicit that we are going to let alpha and beta be between 0 and 90 degrees. And there is no problem with us making such an assumption because we know x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 1. Exclusive. And letting alpha and beta be between 0 and 90 exclusive is just going to achieve sine of alpha and sine of beta be anything between 0 and 1 as well. So now let's see how the first equation has changed once we make this substitution. Well, we are going to get 1 minus cosine of alpha over sine of alpha plus 2 times sine of beta over 1 plus cosine beta plus sine beta is 1. And something you may notice is that 1 minus cosine of alpha over sine of alpha is actually tangent of alpha over 2. Just in case you have forgotten this, since you're pre-calculus class, let me actually write this down. It can be proven that tangent of data over 2 is 1 minus cosine of data over sine of data, or even sine of data over 1 plus cosine of data. Okay, so we have simplified the first equation, but what about this thing? 2 times sine of beta over 1 plus cosine beta plus sine beta. Well, there's no obvious way of simplifying this such that it's going to make us progress closer to the goal of finding alpha and beta or relationship between alpha and beta. But there is one way that seems appealing, and that's subtracting this from both sides of the equation. And let me show you why. So when you subtract this from both sides, we are going to get tangent of alpha over 2 is 1 minus this thing. And realize that when we do 1 minus this entire expression, treating 1 as 1 plus cosine beta plus sine beta over the same thing, is going to result in an expression that's a little bit more symmetric. And the more symmetry we have, usually the better it is. So let's actually simplify this. So we have 1 plus cosine beta plus the sine of beta below. And on the top, we have 1 plus cosine beta. And we have sine of beta minus 2 sine beta, which is negative sine of beta. And now one thing we can do that's really going to help us finish this problem is to note the similarity between this expression and the sine of data over 1 plus cosine data. And we have both of them residing inside. We have sine of beta and we have 1 plus cosine beta. And a natural thing it seems like is to divide both sides by 1 plus cosine beta. So let's do so because that's going to make this thing divided by this thing is 1. So we have 1 minus this thing divided by this thing, as we know, is a tangent of beta over 2. So we know we have 1 minus tangent of beta over 2, and down below, using the same reasoning, is 1 plus tangent of beta over 2. And now there's one more clever insight to be had, 
and that is that this entire thing is a tangent of 45 degrees minus beta over 2. Why is this? Well, recall from your trigonometry class or pre-calculus class that tangent of 45 minus beta over 2 is a tangent of 45 minus a tangent of beta over 2 over 1 minus tangent 45 times the tangent beta over 2. And since tangent of 45 is 1, that's exactly what we have in this expression. So we have shown that tangent of alpha over 2 is in fact equal to tangent of 45 minus beta over 2. And this thing is telling us that alpha over 2 is a 45 minus beta over 2 and possibly differing by integer multiple of 180 degrees. And rearranging this equation gets us alpha plus beta is 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. I'm just moving this over to the other side and multiplying by 2. But since alpha and beta are each between 0 and 90 exclusive, we have mentioned that the value alpha plus beta is going to be between 0 and 180 exclusive. So the only possible integer value of k is 0. So alpha plus beta is in fact 90 degrees. And this is a lovely thing to know. Because if alpha and beta are complementary, that's telling us that y is sine of 90 minus alpha or cosine of alpha. So we know x is sine of alpha, y is cosine of alpha. So we have found from the first expression that x squared plus y squared is 1. And once we know this, finishing up the problem is very easy. So let's look at the second equation, which has 25 times 1 minus y squared is 41 minus 40 times the square root of 1 minus x squared, according to this equation, is going to be y. And now it's a routine exercise to find y. Rearranging this gets us 25y squared minus 40y plus 16 is 0, also known as 5y minus 4 squared is 0, or y is 4 fifth. And because y is 4 fifth and x squared plus y squared is 1, we know x is 3 fifths and we are done. So let's go back up. So we have shown using trig substitutions and trig identities that the solution to this system of equations is x equals to 3 fifths and y equals to 4 fifths and we are done.